on TV here and here after to study with us the lesson quarterly once again uh, on death, dying and the future. Hope uh, to study more we will always urge you to get a copy at your nearest Adventist book center or visit absg.adventist.org and get, get a free copy on death, dying and the future hope and this week it is all about the hope found in the Old Testament. But before we begin, we begin, uh, Mr. Nehemiah Ndaro will pray with us. Shall we pray? Our oh dear Heavenly Master, we come before uh, the this hour, even as we con- begin our discussion on the lesson study. We ask of thy guidance. This we pray by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, dear viewer, the one on my right is Miss Esther Munge, and to my left is Mr. Nehemiah Ndaro, of whom you will hear their voices in due season. The Old Testament hope is what we are looking at this week. The memory text is from Hebrews 11, 17 and 19, that says, By faith Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac. He who had received the promises was ready to offer up his only son. He considered the fact that God is able even to raise someone from the dead, and figuratively speaking, he did receive him back in a figure. So what what this week really would like to tell us is that the, the, the righteous of the Old Testament, they had a hope in the resurrection. That the resurrection is not a teaching of the New Testament, but we can actually find it in the Old Testament. It is mysterious how God created the world from nothing and people have been wondering how will how is he going to resurrect you know someone might have died in the sea someone might have been cremated how is he going to do this the old testament gives us hope that there is a powerful god and so this week we are going to focus on on on, on notions of the final resurrection that is found in the old testament in the in the in the books of job in the books of Psalm, in and and what the prophets Isaiah and Daniel wrote, and straight away we begin with Job. Job says in Job 19, verse 25 to 27, uh, he says, "I know that my Redeemer lives, and that uh, from verse 25 to 27, I know that my de- Redeemer lives, and that in the end he will stand on the earth." And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, and I not another. How my heart yearns within me. You see, dear viewer, life can sometimes become unfair when we see the good people suffering. And Job was such a good person. The Bible calls him, he was blameless, he was upright, he was a man perfect before the Lord Yet God allowed Satan to afflict him in several disastrous ways. Physically, his body was ravaged by painful disease. Materially, he lost large portions of his livestock and property. Within his household, he lost his servants. He even lost his own children. And emotionally, he was surrounded with friends who accused him of being an impenitent sinner who deserved what he was facing. He even had a wife who told him, you know what, Job, you need to desert this God of yours, curse him, and die. Job did not realize that he was the epicenter of a deep cosmic struggle between good and evil. Because Satan had gone up there when the sons of God had gone for a meeting, and and God asked him, have you considered my servant, Job? You know, if, if God had told Job before that, hey, you know, Satan is coming to test you, Job would have put up a... A, a, a fake thing. He would have really tried to, you know, to prove that he is God's God's man. But Job did not have a prior knowledge of what had been happening in heaven. Yet, in his condition, he, he, he proves to us that we can really trust God in hard times. And he says, I know that my Redeemer lives. 
I know I shall see him for myself. Though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. What a glorious hope in the midst of such a tragedy. Surrounded with sickness, pain, economics, collapse, social reproach, and even emotional breakdown, Job could still anticipate the day when he will rise and resurrect beyond the grave. Dear viewer, we too can learn to trust God even amid the harsh conditions and the unfairness that life can bring. And one of the things that can really lighten our afflictions, you know, there are, there are things that will lighten our afflictions, but one of them that will lighten our current affliction is the future hope and the future home where eye has not seen nor ear heard nor has it entered into the hearts of men what the Father has prepared for us. In that land where there is no sickness, in that land where there is no economic collapse, in that land where there is social security, everybody loves everybody because God is love. We too can say with Job, I know that my Redeemer lives and he will stand on the earth after my skin is destroyed. I personally will see the king in his beauty. This was Job's hope. It's my prayer that it will be your hope too. Uh, Miss Esther, I would like you to tell us more about, uh, I mean, tell us about the psalmist's hope. Um, thank you, Eric. Um, uh, I would like to com start by saying that there's nothing wrong with being rich. Mm. There's nothing wrong with aspiring to be rich as well. But what happens when, rich, when riches become your main aim in all the world? We are told the, there is nothing that benefits a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And so we will understand where do riches come in where during resurrection? Do they help really? And when we gain uh, riches, is it that we are gaining them to help the dead? That is some of the few questions that the psalmist helps us to answer again is what is the hope of those who are dead that we get to see here. So I'd, I'd like us to start by reading Psalms 49, 5 to 9, perhaps that will answer some of the questions. Psalms 49, 5 to 9. And I will read, uh, Wherefore should I fail the days of evil? when uh, the iniquity of my heel shall compass me about. They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their soul is precious and it ceases forever. That he should still live forever and not see corruption. Mm. This tells us that there are some principles that we see in most churches, ladies and gentlemen, that people can pay for somebody's soul to be mm -hmm. redeemed. We mm -hmm. can pay for money so that somebody who was destined, we barely know his actions, we knew his actions when he was alive, can be paid for to, be, to become a person who is headed to, to heaven. Mm -hmm. We are told that will never work by uh, the Samis. We also see some of the uh, some of the theories that we find in life. You see, I was reading a a, a book the other day, and it was just telling me that you know some people gain the perception that when you uh, when a person is done, you should give them a gold coin. <laughs> it mm -hmm. used to happen, I guess, in the past. And when you give them a gold coin, when they die, they will enter, quote unquote, the spirit world. And when they enter the spirit world, they'll find a be a big pa uh, a big person who made of skull clothed, and uh, they have to give that gold coin, or they have to have they have to d dive deep into an ocean of spirits, so they can get that coin. Mm -hmm. Again, that goes very wrong because we understand that when a man dies, he ceases to exist, mm -hmm. and no money can redeem him. But we find some hope. We find the, some hope that the only person who can redeem a human being and the only person who will enable us to wake up again from for the people who are asleep, of course, we are told they are asleep and not really dead forever, right? Mm -hmm. There is hope that they will rise again is Jesus Christ. And that we find in Psalms 
45 verse 19 the psalmist prof we find an aspect of prophecy in that psalms 49 verse 15 it says but god will redeem my soul from the power of the grave mm. for he shall receive me mm. so the psalmist already predicts that by the end of it all if we are to die yeah this hope this resurrection we mm. find that concept mm. and who is going to help us raise again it is not money mm -hmm. and money never lasts forever it is god himself again we also he also uh, we find him again in his old age we're talking about focusing on psalm 71 in Psalm 71, we are finding the prayer of an aged believer, as some will say. We are talking about the aged believer, and in this case, it is David. David himself was at an age where he's old. Mm -hmm. He's not young. And there's something he does here. He pleads God for help. He pleads God for help from his enemies. We find one. He also reminds God that when I was in the womb, you are the one who took me out, okay? And then we find uh, that he's also telling, he's telling God that he will praise him all the days of his life. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and uh, perhaps the one thing we find about here is that David's trust in God. Amid his trials, David finds comfort and assurance in recalling how God had cared for him in the past. First, he realizes that God had upheld him from birth and even had taken him out of his out of his mother's womb. Then he acknowledges that God has taught him from his youth. Uh, so th it teaches us trust in God, most especially. And as we focus on again uh, the future, the hope for the people who are dying or who are dead, we can read Psalm seventy-one twenty. It will offer some more insight on on how what specifically david as well thought about it psalm 71 20 says though thou which has shewed me great and sore troubles shalt quicken me again and shall bring me up again from the depths of the earth we can find out that David as well again says that God himself is the one who shall bring me from the depths mm. of the earth. So uh, what the psalmist hope is this, that by the end of it all, we should understand that wealth will not buy us eternal life. Wealth will not last forever. But there's somebody who lasts forever and that is God. Mm. And through it all, he will bring us from the depths of the earth. And that is the only hope we have. Thank you. Amen. We see the psalmist giving us hope of a life beyond the grave. Let us delve a little deeper into the Old Testament. Mr. Neymar and Daro, tell us about the hope that is brought about by Isaiah and by the prophet Daniel. Sure. Dear viewer, one thing that we all will not be friends to is death. Mm. Today, we are alive. Tomorrow, either you or any of us is dead. But the question is, is there any hope beyond the grave? Even as we lay our beloved friends to the grave, as we mourn and say the good things that they did when they were alive, is there any hope that we live with, even as we see our departed friends go six feet deep into the ground. We are not the first people to die. Mm. Those who died in the past, but their brethren were left with some hope. And this is the hope that I bring unto you, dear viewer and the panelists. Mm that yes, the body that we have today is a body that might test death any time. When we read through the book of Isaiah, chapter 26, I'm doing two verses, verse 14 and verse 19. We see what Isaiah would picture concerning this death. And by the way, before I read this, the church that I belong to, the Seventh-day Adventist church, did not just 
come from the blues. Mm. It was founded on some beliefs. We number them the 28 fundamental beliefs. Of the 28 fundamental beliefs, there is about one of those beliefs, in fact the 26th, that talks about death and resurrection. It is not just about death. After death, there comes some hope to those who are dying that there is some resurrection. It might not be today, but we are waiting for a day that there shall be resurrection. This is what Isaiah says in Isaiah chapter 26, dear viewer. Walk with me, verse 14, and we'll move to verse 19. Verse 14. They are <coughs> dead. They shall not live. They are deceased. They shall not rise. Therefore, hast thou visited and destroyed them and made all their memory to perish. Here, we see this prophet Isaiah bringing unto us a people who will die, but there is no hope of resurrection in them. But in the same chapter 26, you read with me verse 19, there is another contrast to what verse 14 would say. In verse 19, Thy dead men shall live, together with uh, my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing, you that dwell in dust, for the day is as the day of the herbs, and the herb, the earth shall cast out the dead. Mm. One thing that we know, like we said when we began, or when I began, that one day we will die. But the question that I ask myself, that you should also ask yourself, dear viewer, is when we die, on which category of this tool will we be found? Are we those who are dying with no hope of resurrection or with no hope of waking away up from our sleep? Or are we dying with a hope that one day when the trumpet shall sound, those who die in Christ shall wake up? One side, Isaiah presents to us the wicked who will remain dead without ever being brought to life again, at least after the second death. But on the other side, which is the side that I wish all of us would be present or would uh, be members of, we meet a people, the righteous dead, who will be raised from death to receive their blessed hope. This then tells us that there is some hope beyond the grave. The final resurrection, resurrection, uh, resurrection that will bring together all the righteous from all ages, including your beloved ones who already died in Christ. I know I'm talking to one viewer who they are mourning their kin. Mm. Perhaps the kin is in the morgue. Burial preparations are underway. But I want to give you a hope beyond the graves that those who die, they shall seek Christ. But let us belong to the category of those who in the resurrection, they will resurrect to meet Christ, not a resurrection that would otherwise rob them of the hope or rob them of the glory or the joy of having resurrected. Daniel is not silent about this issue. In Daniel chapter 12, verse 1 and verse 2, a time will come and this is what Daniel would say in chapter 12 of verse 1 and verse 2. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And he says in verse 2, after this, or after a mention of this time of trouble, that many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Mm -hmm. Dear viewer, the next part is an interesting part, but to some, it's not so interesting. 
it concludes in the second part of that same verse by saying some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt one thing we all will wake from the sleep that we call death mm -hmm. but there are people who will wake from this sleep to an everlasting life but there's a, 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 a category of those who will wake from the sleep to shame. I don't know which category, dear viewer, you lo belong to. I don't know which category is this of people who will wake up from the dust in the final day of resurrection. There is brought to us a picture of two people or two groups of people there's the first resurrection of the righteous dead and there's the second resurrection of the unrighteous dead the span or the time span between the two resurrections the bible mentions it or places it a thousand years after the righteous dead resurrect that is the first resurrection there is a time span of about a thousand years. Mm -hmm. Then they come the second resurrection, a resurrection of those who were unrighteous in their lives. Today, this is the right time, dear viewer, mm -hmm. to change our destiny. Do we belong to those who will get into the second resurrection, which is we resurrect unto a condemnation? Martha the sister to Lazarus knew this when we read from the book of John chapter 11. When Christ visits to comfort them, to believe together with them, Martha would tell Christ that I know that my brother would one day or would wake up or would resurrect in that resurrection. Martha had this hope that there is a resurrection but I'm giving you the same hope, that this resurrection. But know that everybody who will go down to the grave will resurrect. This is the first resurrection and the second resurrection. This is what Sister White, one writer that I love her writings most, writes in the book, The Great Controversy, and the page is 637, concerning those who die in Christ, together with those who die without hope. This is what she says. Graves are opened, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth are weak, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. All who have died in the faith of the third angel's message, of course, found in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 through to verse 11. That those who die in the faith of the third angel's message come forth from the tomb glorified to hear God's covenant of peace with those who have kept his law. The also which pierced him, according to Revelation chapter 1 verse 7, those that mocked and deride Christ dying agonies and the most violent opposers of his truth and his people are raised to behold him in his glory and to see the honor placed upon the loyal and obedient. That even those who pierced Christ's body will resurrect to see him. But they are not resurrecting to enjoy the reward that Christ is bringing to those who died believing or having a hope in him. Mm -hmm. They die unto shame. Dear viewer, as I leave you, the question is, which resurrection are we going to test? Is it the first resurrection or is it the second resurrection? It is my hope and my prayer that we all are present in the first resurrection. Amen. 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 Wow. There is a lot of hope in the Old Testament. Uh, Miss Esther, do you have any last word in a minute that you'd like to tell the viewer? Um, I'd like to say that by the end of it although it's sad how people die when they're young mm. some in the womb some at least die at a good old age it's more of a celebration than actually a mourn for the life 
We can only say the only way we can live right in this world is through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And the only hope we have to be resurrected again in the first resurrection mm -hmm. is again by, by the hope is in God. It's not on what we have. It's not on what we we are in this earth because we can uh, we can attest to like queen elizabeth's burial it was one which was more fancy than mm -hmm. anyone who has ever been buried in yet mm -hmm. that is not the hope that's not the hope that you will resurrect no it's not your own it's not your status mm -hmm. it's just that you walk right with god mm -hmm. through jesus christ again we cannot do it alone and then we have hope and by the end of it all the same god who we have trusted in and the same god whom David trusted in is the same one who shall wake us up. Mm -hmm. and that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Neymar. Last week, I was present in one of our colleagues' burial at Gokwanyo village, Kasipul Kabondo in Homa Bay County, the country, Kenya. And I saw uh, people who were really mourning for their departed brother. And this is the hope that I want to give such people, that I also want to give to myself. Daniel, after having written all these, is consoled in chapter 12 of Daniel and the verses, verse 13. And this is what the Bible says, dear viewer, but go thou thy way till the end be, mm -hmm. for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. Mm. Those who are dead, they are resting. Mm -hmm. But the question is, who are you resting with in the grave that you're going to rest soon, you, dear viewer? Mm -hmm. Are you going to rest with the hope of resurrecting together with the likes of Daniel when the trumpet shall soon resound? It is my prayer that as the brethren who are asleep, as they wait to wake up, you together with I, we change our ways today when it is still today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank you, dear viewer. Abraham had hope that the God who gave him Isaac through a miracle could give Isaac back to him through resurrection. Job hoped to see God himself David hoped that God will redeem him from the realm of death and take him to himself. From the depth of the earth, God will bring up David. Isaiah has hope. He says that our dead will live. Let those who dwell in the dust wake up and shout for joy. And in Isaiah, it is even broader. You know, Job has hope for himself. David has a hope for himself. But Isaiah talks about those who dwell on the dust of the earth to shout for joy. Daniel has hope. He says that multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, some to everlasting contempt. See, dear viewer, Abraham, Job, David, Isaiah, Daniel, all of these people had hope. Do you have hope? Jesus tells us in John 11, 25 and 26, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, we live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will live and never die forever. Do you believe this, dear viewer? Do you believe this? I, it's my prayer that you may believe with heart and soul the words of Jesus that even if you die, you will not die, but you will live forever. Miss Esther, please pray with us to end our study today. Um, let us pray. Our oh, dear Heavenly Father, we come for you this day. Thank you so much we have, uh, for the study we have learned. Thank you so much that we have learned that when we rest in you, there is hope for our, our, your soon coming and the hope that we shall live with you where there will be no pain, no sorrow, and as well no death. Guide each one of us, guide the viewers back at home. May you be with each one of them and help us to live each day according to the purpose you have set for us. I pray this just and believe in your holy name. Amen. 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 Thanks for joining us. Do yourself a favor by getting yourself a copy to study deeper at your nearest ABC or visit absg.adventist.org. Until next time, see you. 
Danke. Thank you.